April. So glad you could come to our village and sit by our fire so we can thank you in the proper manner. It's my privilege, Ben Bandu. I wouldn't want to pass through this forest without visiting your village and seeing for myself how the Banda people live. Oh my, you speak so eloquently. My brother sits by the fire. I know he wishes to speak with you. But the elder would speak with you first. He rests in his hammock up on the mound. Go speak with him, and then come down again, so we can celebrate the death of the Gribbler and the brave escape of April Ryan and Ben Bondu's brother. It's Ben Bandu. It's Ben Bandu's brother, Bandu Uta. Oh my, we would be honored to have you sit next to us. But the elder does insist that you speak with him first. He would like to thank you in person. It's Crow! When did he get here? I should speak with the elder first. I don't want to seem disrespectful. Lowing. It's a hammock built for a bondu. <laughs> It's the Elder Bondu. The hero of the day comes to visit the old Bondu. Let me see your face, human. Make yourself shorter. That's much better. The human is closer to the soil now, and she may even feel it like we do. Moving. Shaping itself, breathing, beating. I don't feel anything. Sorry. So the human is not a digger. But we don't judge her because of that. The human is a hero, she is. Don't call me that. I'm not a hero. I was just in the right place at the right time to help somebody out. She destroyed the evil that haunted our forest and rescued one of our little ones from the creatures of chaos. And so she is a hero. She's the one spoken of in our songs, is she not? The one who will deliver us from an evil presence and who will go on to save the balance. You are she, are you not? I don't know. Well, we will see, we will see. You will sleep in our spirit dig tonight, and then tomorrow we will see. But now, you must enjoy yourself. This feast is in your honor to show our appreciation for your courage. Thank you. Go, eat, and drink, and dance, and then go to sleep in the spirit thing. We will talk tomorrow before you continue your journey. You are on a journey, are you not? A very long one, yeah. We are all on a journey, but yours is the most important one ever. So go. I will smoke my pipe and think on prophecies and songs. Go on. Go. Enjoy the feast in your honor. We will speak again in the morning, after you spend the night in the spirit day. Yes, yes, in the morning. Crow? Oh, hey, uh, I was, uh, wondering what happened to you. What happened to you? I thought you were supposed to help out in the search. I could have used some assistance this afternoon. Uh, yeah, but I did find some mal... Some banda, didn't I? Just not the one we were looking for is all. And besides, I was beat. My wings can only carry me so far before I need a twig to rest on and a couple of juicy berries. Speaking of berries, did you taste the ones they got here? The word is yum. Big yum. I don't know what they soaked them in, but hoo-hoo, ma'am! 
Well, at least you're okay. No, sure. You know me. I could use a good flea plucking, though. Care to reward me for my diligence? Diligence? Ha! <laughs> <sighs> I'm guessing I'll be plucking my own fleas tonight, then, and, and I'm okay with that. I'm blaming you if I wake up with a crick in the neck tomorrow, though. Enjoying yourself, Crow? It's a party. I'm the party bird. What do you think? Enjoying yourself, Crow? I'm warm. I'm full. I kissed a pretty chick today. Thanks for asking, though. Enjoying yourself, Crow? <laughs> sleepy. Very sleepy. He's sleeping, bless his soul. Oh dear, it's April. Sit, sit down. Are you feeling all right? I thought you disappeared on me back at the Gribbler's lair. Oh dear, I do apologize. I saw the Gribbler return from the forest, so I ran into the bushes and headed straight for the village. I was going to get help, you understand, but then I bumped into my brother and I told him what was happening. Well, I'm glad you're okay. Thanks to you, April. How did you kill the Gribbler? Lots of luck and a little bit of quick thinking. My limited talents in the martial arts were woefully underused. Were you frightened? I don't think I've ever been so frightened in my entire life. Kind of exhilarating, actually. Although at this point, I think I've had quite enough excitement for a lifetime. Oh, dear me. I could never be as brave as you, April. Ever. What is the spirit dig the Elder told me about? Oh, it's a sacred place. A very sacred place. It's where we, the Bonda, can speak with our ancestors, ask them questions, and learn from their wisdom. Yeah, well, the Elder said I was to sleep there tonight. He did? The Elder said that? Then you have been honored by him, April. Only those worthy of the spirits of our ancestors can spend the night in the Spirit Dig. Where is the Spirit Dig? Right behind you, at the far end of our green. Where did you say the spirit dig was again? Right behind you, April. The entrance faces our green. Enjoy the party, guys. Oh, but it's in your honor, April. You must enjoy it yourself, too. It's some kind of bed made with twigs and moss. Not as comfortable as a real mattress, I'm sure, but it'll do. I'll just have a look around before I go to bed. It's not a big fire, but it's comfortably warm in here, and the smoke has a very pleasant, very mellow texture to it. Mushrooms? Or chairs? Or both? Psychedelic furniture. I know some people at home would go crazy about stuff like that. There are tunnels extending down into the earth behind the screen. I'll just lie down for a few. No, screw that. I'm getting a good night's sleep. That's what I'm doing. I've never been this tired in my life. think you're doing.
Wh- what? What are you doing here, you arrogant bitch? You don't think you can really save the world, do you? Who are you? I don't tell me you don't recognize me, April Bryan. I'm you. That's impossible. This is just another dream. I must be dreaming. Think again, loser. This is as real as it gets. Why are you here? I'm sending you home, that's what. You're a sad little twit, don't you realize that? There's no point subjecting the entire world, hit two worlds, to your feeble attempts at redeeming yourself, is there? Go away, leave me alone. How the hell am I supposed to do that, Einstein? I am you. You are me. Unfortunately for the both of us, we're inseparable. I don't need this Freudian id crap. Not now. There's so much I have to do, so many people I have to help. Oh yeah? Like you really believe that? Like you give a shit about those people? You're doing this for yourself, April, and that's why you're gonna fail. Shut up! Shut up! That's always your way out, isn't it? Telling people to shut up when they speak the truth and shutting them out when they're getting too close for comfort. Hey, don't tell me. I do it because Daddy hurt me. Screw that. How do you think you're gonna hold up when this job gets tough if you can't rely on anybody or believe in anything? I'm doing it, aren't I? Yeah, because what kind of choice did you have? Face your problems back home? Face the nightmares? I don't think so. So you run. And you think you're putting distance between yourself and your fear of the past and the present? All you're doing is running straight into an inevitable nervous breakdown. Like right now. You're talking to yourself, April. Now that's not something a mentally stable person would do, is it? Shut up! Shut up! It's okay, April. It's okay. Charlie? Charlie, is that you? Shh. Don't you worry. I'm here. I'll take good care of you. Oh, God, Charlie, I'm so glad that... that you're... you're... You're not here. You can't be. I'm still dreaming. No, no, you're not dreaming. I'm here, but in spirit only. Is it? Is it really you, Charlie? We are Charlie, your friend. We feel his heart and his mind. And his sleeping spirit joins us. But we speak from the great digs of the beyond, where the songs of the banda never end. You're the dead? We have passed into the soil. We are spirits, and we have come to guide you. Why Charlie? Why do you show me Charlie? He loves you, and so he guides us here, into your heart and mind. He loves me? Charlie loves me? You are not alone in the world, April. There are many who care for you. Your friends and your family. Your real family. You are not alone in your journey through life. What do you know about my family? My real family? They watch out for you, April. That's all we know. They have never abandoned you. They have just let you live the life you needed to live. To understand. It's important that you understand. Understand what? That life, even when difficult and painful, is a gift. That love is priceless and rare and precious. That every good action, every good thought counts. And that a single person can make a difference, can change the world. If she puts her mind to it, if she believes in herself, and the people who believe in her. But everything is so frightening. I don't understand half of what goes on around me. Did not the mother say she would help you? Watch out for you? Did not Charlie and Emma, your friends, offer to give you a helping hand when you 
didn't even tell them the truth about what was going on? And Cortez the Red, did he not prove himself a friend as well? How then can you be so afraid when you have so many spirits to be with you in your darkest hour? Cortez the Red? Please, tell me what I have to do. I'm just fumbling in the dark here. Follow your heart and your spirit, April. And use your mind. These are your weapons. And with them, you will defeat chaos. When you wake, tell the Elder that you've had a Bakabar. That you've spoken with the band of spirits. And that your name amongst our people is now April Bandu and Bata. April Digger who will seek and find. Oh, don't go, please don't, go! Not the most comfortable bed I've slept in, but acceptable. Oh, she's awake! April! Good morning, Ben Bondu. Greetings of the new day to you, April. Did you sleep well in the spirit, Dig? Did I sleep well? Aside from the voices, the apparitions, the sharp rocks poking me in the back, and the moist moss mattress? No, not really. So you were visited by the spirits? I guess. When you told me last night that I would be, I didn't believe you. I thought it was just a manner of speaking, like saying, don't let the bed bugs bite. Our ancestors are close to us at all times. Once in a while, they speak to those who have been chosen to spend a night in the spirit dig. That they spoke to you is a great honor. April, a great honor. Right now, I'd be happy to exchange all the honor in the world for one decent night's sleep. <laughs> oh dear me, you are very funny, April. If all humans are as funny as you, your cities must be filled with laughter. The Elder wishes to speak with you again. And I must sing now, down in the tunnels. It was decided this morning that I was finally ready to join the diggers. I'm happy for you, Ben Bandu. Thank you. May the balance provide you on your journey, April. You will be in my heart, always. And you will be in mine, Ben Bandu, always. Y you will come back when your journey is over. I'll try. Goodbye. Oh my. I cannot stand farewells. Farewell. So, you are awake? Did you sleep well? As well as can be expected, I guess. Does the word Buck Bar mean anything to you? Akbar, where did you hear this word? I heard it in a dream. Dreams are not just dreams in the spirit dig, human. Dreams have a presence there, and the spirits use dreams to guide us. The spirits told me that I'd had a Bakbar. So the spirits spoke to you openly? You are lucky, human. Some who enter the spirit dig never come out again, and some spend the night but hear nothing. But to you, the spirits spoke. A bakbar is a vision of yourself that speaks the truth in two ways. One is the dark truth. This is how you see yourself when you are not sure of yourself or angry with yourself. The other truth is the very opposite of the first. 
this is how you must see yourself to be happy. But the spirits remind us that both are important, that you cannot love yourself without first seeing your flaws. The people I saw, were they really there? The spirits use masks to convey their messages, and they speak in voices from the past or the present that carry great weight with you. The messengers are never the same, nor the message, but you must take care to hear and heed their words. I was told that my name among the Banda would be April Bandu Mbata. She among the little ones who seeks and finds. So, you are the one we sing of, the human who would come to aid us and to save our world, and who will then tear it apart. You bring tidings both happy and sad to the Panda, April Pandu and Bata, both hope and despair. This world will never be the same again once you have passed through it. But we are grateful, and I'm proud to have met you and to give you what you came for. It was just luck that brought me here. I didn't come for anything in specific. Yes, you did. This is what you came for. What is it? This is the stone given to us by the fathers to keep safe until this day. It has been with us for so long. Oh, it's a piece of the disc! Then you know it. You came for the stone even though you didn't know it until now? I guess I did. Thanks. Now you must continue your journey, April Bandu and Pata. Remember that this is your tribe now. And so you are welcome at our fires and in our digs whenever you come this way again. I'm honored. Thank you. May there always be soil between your toes, April Bandu and Bata. And between yours, Elder. Goodbye. shouldn't leave without waking Crow. Poor thing. He'll probably freak out if I'm gone when he wakes up. He's sleeping. Wake up! Huh? Turn off the big light, Mommy. It's called the sun, Crow. Welcome to the world of the living. Oh. <laughs> I was having this weird dream about a big-ass turkey wearing a pair of red shoes. And you were there. And, and he was there. And, and, and maybe it wasn't a dream after all. I think it's safe to say that you need therapy. And we need to leave right now. We do? We do! Let's go get him! <clears throat> uh, who are we getting again? Some evil alchemist out to rule the world with his powerful and destructive magic. Yes! Exactly! Uh, I'll keep an eye out for other potential threats then, shall I? Like, uh, marauding mice? You do that, Crow. Thank you. Swamp water. There are things moving down there. Big things. Mosquitoes everywhere. I hope one of those clouds doesn't get a whiff of me in charge. The last thing I need now is malaria. There's an ordeal I prefer not to go through again. Did I drop something? It feels like I dropped something. Whatever it was, one of those... things probably ate it.
I spent half the day crossing that damn swamp, and I have no intention of going back that way until I have to. I'm not going back across that swamp again. They look like dark purple tulips with a satin texture. Pretty, but a little too gothic for my taste. It's like, where's the funeral? Pretty, but a little too dark and gothic for me. They feel very soft to the touch and soothing like skin moisturizer. I'll bring a few in case my hands get dry. Never hurts to be prepared for a dry skin emergency. Roper Clax's castle. The whole gravity defying bit kind of gives it away. I wonder if that's like the Arcadian equivalent of an RV. I mean, I wouldn't think relocation is a big problem. Fingers feel tingly. Oh my god! What are you? I don't understand what you're saying. Can you try to open your mouth a bit? Impossible? Okay. Okay, there's gotta be some way to help you talk. By the way, can you help me get up there? Into the castle? Yes. I, I can't move. Any magic? I don't know any magic, sorry. But I'll try to find a way to soften you up. Thank you. He's been petrified by magic. Hello again? Yes. Um, so, you can't help me get into the castle unless I help you soften up a bit first, yes? Yes. Right. A soft, purple, moisturizing flower. That doesn't work. The stone surface is too coarse and the petals aren't moist enough by themselves. I think I need to mix them with something to make it easier to apply. Those berries look ripe and juicy, but my mom taught me never to judge a book by its cover. They're probably poisonous and almost certainly fattening. Nuh-uh, that marshy ground between me and the berries looks treacherous. I'll probably get stuck and drown. Nope, the marshland's too dangerous to be wandering around in. out here. You should really be wearing a sweater, doll. You don't want to catch a cold, not with the fate of the known cosmos on your shoulders. I'm fine, thanks, Crow. What's going on with you? Keeping my eyes open, you know, floating on the warm winds, doing that whole Hawkeye shtick. I'm getting pretty good at it, too. I spotted you from at least 100 yards away. Impressive. Yep. They don't call me the Lord of the Winds. For nothing. Do they really call you that? No, but soon, by the balance, they will! Now, what can I do for you, sweetheart? 
What can I do you for? Crow, I need you to fly over there and get some of those berries for me. And Crow? Yes, ma'am. Don't eat the berries. No, ma'am. Thanks, Crow. You got it. I'm gonna go back up there and work on my eyesight. I ain't stopping until I can spot those cute chicks from miles and miles away. I got a few of these ripe and sticky berries, but I don't want to carry them with me for much longer. The juice is coloring my pants. Other than getting them all red and sticky, what would be the point? It's some sticky, mushy moisturizing cream I made from the berries in the flower. I'm not particularly hungry. Feel better? Soft, soft, softer. Yes. Unfortunately, I don't think the salve will be effective for very long. I'm April, by the way. Lorhan, I'm a sailor, and you've got to help me get out of here. I don't think I can stand it much longer. What happened to you? <sighs> that blasted, blasted alchemist cast a spell on me, turned me to solid rock. Then he put me here, to be gatekeeper and anchor for his blasted castle. That was near six full moons past now. You've been here for half a year? Curse the balance. When you say it like that, it is an age. My wife is sure to have taken someone else's bed by now. Blasted magic. The vanguard were right. What do you mean the vanguard were right? That we've been at the mercy of the balance for too long. It's time to make some changes. Put the control back into the hands of the people. How would that have helped you? Well, for one, there wouldn't be any rogue magicians like this Roper Clax running about causing trouble. Do you not agree? I'm not about to argue politics with you right now, Lorhan. I'm in a hurry. Who's arguing? And blasted be my rocky hide! Get me out of here! How can I help you? It ain't just me, April. There are dozens of men up there. Servants and sailors and merchants and soldiers, all sent here by their masters to deal with Roper Clax. Ha! <laughs> Cursed be the balance. We've all been turned to stone, and our souls trapped in a crystal that the madman keeps in his tower. He draws power from that, power that shouldn't be his by right. But this blasted problem of the balance has upset the natural order of things. If the Vanguard were in control, this would never have happened. Things would be like they used to be a long time ago. Everything was good then? Oh sure, there were problems, but this rift, it ain't natural. Science and magic belong together, in the hands of the people. Not to some naked guardian fellow on a tower somewhere far away. Listen, we've got more important things to think about, like how I'm going to get inside the mountain, beat this clock sky, and free your soul. Yeah, 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 you're right. And I can feel my muscles turning to stone again. We must hurry. How do I get inside the mountain? I'll pull the stairs down for you. Usually when Clax comes and goes, he softens me up for a bit, just so I can raise and lower the stairs for him, and then he changes me back to solid rock again. Once you're inside, and if you manage to defeat the madman, I don't see how you're going to do that, a young woman like yourself. I'm pretty resourceful, and I'm not your run-of-the-mill teeny bopper either. You're what? Anyways, if you defeat Clax, you must find his study and break the crystal, the soul stone. That should break the spell and give us back our flesh and bone bodies. Sounds like a plan. All right, here goes. Watch your head, April.
great. I so love these things. Jump! Jump into the abyss! Who was that? Wait, don't tell me, evil wizard. They all sound like Richard III on crack. Whoa, I'm not afraid of heights, but this... this is kind of scary. Something tells me that door down there is important. How am I gonna get to it? Jump! Jump into the abyss! Can't. The door's been blocked. Lorhan must have turned back into solid rock. Oh. <laughs> He's got his hand out like he's begging. I got a whole handful of these Arcadian iron coins. His hand's on fire. Salt in one hand and pepper in the other. It's a pepper shaker. It's a salt shaker. That gargoyle's holding a large hourglass. It's a rolled up parchment. Whoa! Talk about a hissy fit. Evil Mirror Universe Amy sure got some anger stored up. Guess she doesn't want me to get that parchment. It's like that Star Trek episode with the Mirror Universe Spock. It almost looks like a Mirror Universe me. Nah, I don't trust my mirror image. She's a bad girl. Who's knocking? It's a stone door. That door's got an hourglass sticking out of it. Toss yourself into the abyss and save. 
decay yourself from an eternity encased in stone. How the heck did I end up here? I didn't walk. Oh, forget it. Magic again. Nah, nah, nah. You lose, you die. of a staircase. Not fair. Now I understand how Wily e. Coyote felt. Damn bird. <laughs> this is just a painting of a staircase. One stony face. Salt. Pepper. Say whatever you want about Roper Clax, he certainly knows how to keep a big fire. Oh, wait, are those human bones down there? It's a roaring fire with the emphasis on roaring. Big, certainly, but I can't see anything through it. It's like there's a thick fog outside obscuring everything. That's one big window. Finally! <laughs> I was beginning to think you would never make it through my labyrinth. Welcome to my humble home. Do you like it? I had it built according to my own specifications by the most skilled architects of Arcadia. They have since become a permanent and quite attractive fixture of their own building, of course. Oh, but I forget my manners. I am, as I am sure you already know, Roper Clax. And you would be? April Ryan, pleased to meet you, sir. Oh, but the kitten has manners. How precious, how very precious. I am tempted to not turn you into stone. You would make a spirited wife and mother to my demonic children. But no! It will be more fun to destroy you. Relinquish your prisoners and free the wind! <laughs> Oh, this is precious. 
<laughs> this is a Kodak moment. But why look so shocked? I am quite familiar with your world, you know. Automobiles, rocket ships, telephones, America's funniest home videos. I have great plans for the future, you see. Once the Vanguard succeed in their hilariously destructive little ploy, they do not know what they are getting themselves into. <laughs> As for you, April Ryan, yes, I know who you are. I think I will allow myself a few moments of amusement before I take your soul and trap you in solid stone. Why did you trap the wind? Why does the wolf eat the sheep? I don't think you answered my question. Because I can, little girl. Because I can. And because of who I am. Because I am hungry. And because the time is right. I think you did it because you're insecure and you have to show off your petty magic to the world. Shut your pretty little mouth! I will devour you! I will... <clears throat> but we must not lose our self-control, must we? No, we must not. Why did you turn those people into stone? Questions, questions, questions! I do not need to explain myself to you, little bastard child! Do you know who your parents are? No, of course not. Too stupid! What? What do you know about my parents? Suffer the little children. Oh, how I love that phrase. It is my life's philosophy. I like suffering, especially the suffering of innocent children. Their screams are so pretty, their tears so... Salty. You're a real shit, Clax. I know you are, but what am I? <laughs> Prepare to be defeated. Prepare to be defeated. Ha! Clichés. Is that the best you can do? Watch me. Yes. And you plan to do what? Witness the men who came before you, with their weapons and their magic. Look what happened to them, turned to stone. Each and every one of them for all eternity. I even own their souls now. And they will feed me and keep me strong for as long as I need them. How original. Been reading a lot of fairy tales lately, have we? Oh, how precious. <laughs> Gotta go. See you later. Not so quick. You are not leaving here. Ever. The way out is blocked. You did not think I was oblivious to what my gatekeeper was doing, did you? I know everything. I let you into my castle, dear little thing. See? I could scour your flesh off your bones in a second, little girl. Now, do you think you could defeat me? How did you do that? Alchemy, little girl. The most powerful magic. It was a spell of my own creation. I knocked it together only last night. Yeah, well, I can pull a rabbit out of a hat. I can pull a hat out of a rabbit, what's your point? Whoa, I've never seen that before. It is not a pretty sight, and I love it. How about a proper challenge? A proper... <clears throat> what, what do you mean by a proper challenge? I can't defeat you with magic, I'm not a wizard. Wizards! Frauds! The lot of them! The only real magic is the magic of alchemy. 
But of course, you cannot defeat me with magic. That is why I will win. What's so great about beating me with magic? That's not a challenge, that's a walkover. If we even the odds out a bit, you'll have more fun and satisfaction from turning me into stone later. You are trying to trick me, I know that. But you intrigue me, little girl. Go on then, issue a challenge worthy of my powers. It's Roper Clax, your basic evil wizard and bad dresser. I challenge you to a game of hopscotch. Do not underestimate me, little girl. I was young once too, believe it or not. And I was the neighborhood champion in hopscotch three years running. Um, okay. Let's rock and roll. Fine, you win. I challenge you... to a round of tic-tac-toe. Ah. <laughs> Did I forget to mention that back at the Alchemist's Academy, I was a faithful member of the Tic-Tac-Toe Club for five years? Oh, really? Fine, you win. I challenge you to a spelling bee. Ha! Spelling. My secret pattern. All right. <clears throat> you begin. Give it to me. Um, sure. Okay. Um, spell... Bureaucracy. Bureaucracy, as in a body of non-elective government officials, bureaucracy, B-U-R-E-A-U-C-R-A-C-Y, bureaucracy. Now it's your turn. Spell... Anzebequakalia. Answer what? That's not a real word. It is... It is a terminology often used in the study of the black art of alchemy. Now spell it. A N S Oh, forget it. I challenge you to guess my weight. 118 pounds. Damn. I challenge you to recite a monologue from Shakespeare's Macbeth. <coughs> if it were done, when it is done, then twere well it were done quickly. If the assassination could tremble up the consequence and catch with his surcease, success, that but this blow might be the be-all and the end-all. All right, all right already. I challenge you to a cooking contest. Ah, cooking. My secret passion. You have not lived until you have tasted my mince pie. Oh, brother. Forget cooking. 
I suck at cooking anyway. Give me a moment, and I'll think of a better challenge. A moment is all you get, little girl. Strangely enough, it's an old-fashioned calculator. Like the ones they used back in, like, the Elizabethan times. I challenge you to a contest of simple arithmetic using only this petty little device against your supreme intellectual powers. Give me your best shot, but after this, I will take your soul and trap you in stone for all eternity. Sounds good to me. Okay, here's one. 49 times 11. 49 times 11 what? Numbers. Okay, think of apples and oranges. 49 apples times 11 oranges. 49 times 11. Let's see. Carry the one over, divide by three. What to do with that file? <clears throat> oh, forget that one. So that leaves us with... Nine! Aha! <laughs> Wrong! It's 539. That was an easy one, Klax. Is that the best you can do? Uh, two out of three. I'll give you an even easier one this time. 603 divided by three. Ooh, you underestimate my powers, little girl. 5,867.2.3! Aha! Way off, buddy. It's 201. Sorry, you lose. Give me that thing! Ooh. This is intriguing. This really is. What does this do? Oh, my. I always thought math was such a waste of time.